That explains a lot. So recently, Johan Schoberg and Stacey Place had an interview with Alice from The Main Quest, a blog that covers horse games. This article has been making the rounds a few times because it actually addresses the glass door fiasco and talks about some other problems. Yeah. But overall, the reactions have been split. Some love it, some hate it, and some, like me, don't really know what the heck to think about it. It's a mixed bag. This is actually my second video I made on this article. The first I scrapped because one, my voice was in shambles, and two, I just did not like my initial take. I had a hard time with this video and with this article, so I'd like to thank Ginny O for being my soundboard, for giving me advice, and for just being awesome. If you like analytical videos, you can check out her series, How Not to Do an MMO, particularly number five. I've watched the whole series, but number five explores the deeper problems within SSO. I'm going to touch on some highlights in this article. I won't be doing the entire article. There are really only some points that are worth discussing. So, let's get into it. Okay, wait, let me just get one thing out of the way. Star Stable Online is a horse-focused MMORPG. Star Stable is not an RPG. It is an adventure game. Role-playing games are, by definition, a role you fill in the game. So, for example, when I play Morrowind, I can play it as a bard or as a barbarian. Two completely different playstyles. Same with the Mass Effect series. And choices that I make in the game have an impact on the world. Each of these roles will change the game significantly in how I approach it. Role-playing game, by definition, gives you the freedom to approach the game in the way that you want, even if that is only how you distribute your stats, which determines how you can approach a problem. SSO is not even close to an RPG. It is an adventure game, which is fine. I love adventure games, but it's not an RPG. Petty thing to point out, but it drives me nuts when people call it an RPG, so let's just get into the meat. So the first part of the article talks about Stacy Place and how big the company has grown. From 50 to 200. The company is clearly growing. That is good. It means the company is healthy and still profitable. But the problem is this growth certainly does not reflect in your game. Although the visual appeal has certainly gone up, I feel like the game has stagnated over the past four years or so and that there really isn't anything moving forward. Games that are older than SSO have better dressage mechanics and varied jump heights for their horses. How is it possible that in 2021 the main horse game online still has none of these features? Like I said, company is clearly growing, but the growth is not showing in-game. We've really evolved and are moving in a positive direction, I believe, Stacy says. I'd like to know what you define as positive. This year alone, you've removed events and you've removed cold tolerance. The only thing you've added that is not a horse is a toggle button for magic horses, a visual upgrade to the carrying system, a quest, and an area that is already dead because you're not adding anything to the area. If this is a positive direction, Stacy, then I worry for what you'll do in the future. We're working on how we set priorities and assign resources appropriately. At this point in time, you make at least $44 million a year. So yes, it would be a good idea to distribute those resources in your game. But I believe that it's difficult when you're making two new games and working on a new Mistfall series. I'm not kidding. That's the problem I believe in your company. You're distributing your resources too thinly, and this has an adverse effect on your main game, Star Stable. But let's move on. They say they have a proprietary game engine, and it's 10 years old. A proprietary game engine is an engine that was designed in-house. From what I could tell from my rudimentary research, it's not that difficult to make your own engine. In some ways, it's quite beneficial. But this engine is really old, and they do admit they're going to prioritize in fixing the problem this year, which will in turn fix their tech debt. I've seen a big improvement in the past year. In some respects to the engine, yes, they have been using third-party engines to fix their visual appeal and sound. These are simply gone and F-Mod respectively. What I am not seeing is some sort of gaming engine specifically being utilized, for example, Unreal Engine. It costs money, of course, but with $44 million, that really shouldn't be a problem to start bringing in these engines. However, I will give credit that they have started moving in this direction, so it is possibly a sign of better things to come. They mentioned Glassdoor and how some of the communities came across it, that Glassdoor specifically criticizes management. And here's what Stacy says about that. Yes, we are aware of those reviews. There is definitely truth in these complaints. Acknowledgement of a problem is the first step in fixing it. It is good that we're not seeing another attempt at those reviews aren't true. 
I do appreciate this, seeing as myself and many others have been attacked and accused of using a bogus site to bring to light the issues of Star Stable. We now have some validation that yes, the complaints in Glassdoor are true, or at least some of them. They always gotta leave some wiggle room, don't they? Later on in the article, she says we don't do crunch. When comparing this to Glassdoor, it seems to be true. However, crunch is not the problem. The problem is that you don't give creative freedom to your employees and that breeds a very unhealthy environment. You are known to turn your back on your employees when they are trying to give input. I hope that is something that you are also working to fix. Overall, players discussing these matters is a positive thing for us, though, she says. If working conditions and technical deficiencies are being discussed by the community, that can help people bring it up and push for change internally. It can lend the arguments additional weight. True. The more we, as players, push, the more the problems become public knowledge, the more you are pressured to addressing them. That's why it's so important that we speak up, why we keep pushing. It's really the only way to ensure some form of change. Many people on the team care a lot and genuinely want to improve things. And we read every email we get from players. Even though sometimes people will get pre-written answers, it's all forwarded to the relevant teams. What I find quite funny in this statement is that in another article also done in September, Johan says this. Sometimes they don't like what we do or they have opinions, but we become better at being proactive as well and communicating. That's something that I'm generally very happy about, the very positive, healthy and fun interactions with the community. You say on one hand you dump us with cookie cutter responses and on the other you claim that you have a healthy relationship with your community. You've quite deliberately put a player in debt and told them it's their problem and I've heard horror stories of how your customer service treats its player base. I believe that there are people on your team who genuinely want to improve things, but you need to fix your customer service. The way some of you treat your player base is downright shocking at times. Players want things to do, and the story has to be continued, Stacey agrees. There's definitely a hunger for more in-game content, and we want to deliver on that. There is no in-game content. We don't really have anything to do other than grind. We want something fun to do, something to get excited about. But your focus is prettying up your game. That should be the least of your worries. The problem with your game is not its visual appeal, it's what you can do in that pretty environment that will decide if it's a good game or not. A good example of this is when EA took over Star Wars Battlefront. The game looked amazing, it felt and sounded like Star Wars, but the game was so bad that within a few months, most players moved back to the older Battlefront game because it was just more fun. Good graphics do not equal good gameplay. Good gameplay equal good gameplay. And you're not adding anything to your game apart from pretty horses and pretty environments. This is the problem, Star Stable. Little to no true gameplay. Stacy explains that there has not really been a dedicated quest team at SSO recently. What? What the fuck? And that as a result, the people who could have been working on that would keep having other tasks assigned to them. That's a bombshell if I ever saw one. Number one, so there weren't two teams, or at least there hasn't recently been two teams. I hope you are good enough to explain that to your defenders then, because they've been using that as an excuse for why we only get horses. Number two, the quests are not taking a long time because it's difficult to make, as you've been saying for how long. It takes a long time because there is no team working on it, yes? Number three, to whom were you sending the requests then? You said earlier in the article that all emails are forwarded to the respective teams. Well, you didn't have a quest team, so where did my emails go asking you for more quests? You really put your foot in this one, SSO. The implications of this is that the content for your game is secondary. Content for a game is secondary. I don't know how any game can make content for the game secondary. It's always about juggling resources. Between new horses, events and updating environments and character designs, it's been difficult to get resources allocated for the creation of new quests. You know what would help? A dedicated quest team. I'm still not over this! And let's break this down for a moment, shall we? 
Horses, fine, you make them all the time. Events, you've dumped most of your events earlier in the year, so that's no excuse. Updating environments, that should be secondary. A very secondary thing to adding content to your game. Character designs, <laughs> we'll get to that. Horses are our main business, in some respects. Are you going to talk about how you bumped up the prices for outfits this year? How you bumped up the prices for pets this year? How about how you've never raised the cap on your big shillings? I guess I should be grateful that you haven't taken away our star coins allowance yet, but I think it's been a great temptation. I mean, if we don't have a star coin allowance, imagine how much money you'd make then. And we take them seriously. So seriously that you forget about the rest of your game. Good grief. If our working conditions mean that sometimes a feature takes a bit longer to get done and release that's worth it in the end. I would agree with this if the game hasn't been stalling so badly for so long. Your game is almost dead. Your game has nothing to offer. It has no end game, no new quests. I'm still not over this. No new race mechanics that you've been promising and we've been asking for for years. Perhaps, and here's a wonderful thought, you stop taking it so easy and start working on your game. It's, it's just a thought. The new character creation will offer a lot more varied options to express yourself. So that's also a while away though. Okay, so it's a while away. It's something that you're juggling. But if it's taking so long, why is it that you're not focusing on anything else that will bring your game up to a decent standard? But it's a ways away. That is perfectly fine. I actually don't mind that. Just don't make promises you're not planning on keeping. This is what got you in this mess in the first place. There should just be more horse games in general. <laughs> no, 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 Stacy. You really don't want more horse games on the market because then it means you'd actually have to work to keep your game relevant. Because at this point in time, the second a better game drops, Star Stable will be dropped like a hot potato because there is nothing that is keeping players in your game except for pretty horses and clubs. And that is just not enough for gamers overall. Johan Schoberg then says, Star Stable Online has lots and lots of content. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Shall I introduce you to the player who blasted through to level 17 in 12 days? I understand that there are certainly dailies that will take me a few months to finish and thanks to the roadblocks you put in the game, your main quest will also take a few months. But that is an artificial longevity in your game. World of Warcraft, Elder Scrolls Online and DC Universe Online are all games that will let me disappear for months on end because they have chunks upon chunks of content. DC Universe Online is completely free and they have monthly events and weekly updates and their team is about the same size as yours. You don't have lots of content, Star Stable. You have lots of grind. Johan continues. That was the original idea behind weekly updates, to keep players coming back to see what was new. This aspect has not changed. What's different is that the bar has been raised over and over. You're adding five minute updates that adds races, horses, small features or new areas. Really nothing to the gameplay or enjoyment for players. And really, how has the bar been raised? We still don't have dressage, we still don't have blankets, better carrying system, open paddocks for our horses, but we have a pretty spot to ride through. Your priorities are in the crapper and you need to start looking at this seriously. We want to improve the experience of horse riding and bonding with your horse. In all honesty, how long have we been waiting for both of these features to be incorporated into your game? How long have you been advertising build a bond with your horse? Your 10th anniversary has come and gone, and all that you could give us was yet another horse. The one thing that players are sick and tired of seeing. If you really did care about feedback, you would have taken our feedback and made the 10th year anniversary a step in a new direction. A cool new gameplay mechanic, or perhaps a dressage mechanic. But seeing as you have a horse team and a group of people being thrown left and right in the company where you need them, how can we expect anything else but mediocrity from that chaos? Keep playing, keep interacting with us with love and respect but with honesty. We'll be glad to have you with us for the next 10 years. I do sincerely hope that you are here for the next 10 years because I, like I said before, you have competition that is nipping at your heels and you're going to have a hell of a time when they land, Johan. A lot to unpack, and I think I got more worked up than I originally wanted, but it is what it is. Overall, I don't know how to feel about this article. I want to believe it's a step in the right direction, but I also know SSO, and I know how they work, 
and I know how many times they've promised and didn't deliver. I also don't like the wriggle room they give themselves, like three years for events, it's worrisome. And with more games pushing behind them, I don't start think Star Stable has that kind of time. But I want to leave this on a positive note, because man this thing was negative. I want to believe that they will deliver, but really, only time will tell if they will.